England, a country that takes huge pride in football and the culture that comes alongside it. A country that has produced numerous quality and iconic players over years and years of football. A country that attracts world-class players from all over the world to play in the English Premier League, which is widely considered to be the best footballing league in the world. A country that is always predicted to go far in international tournaments and also has a stat squad of quality players. But England are also a footballing country that continues to fail again and again and again. Of course you probably all know the topic of today's discussion, we're going to be talking about that England game and the final against Spain in the Euros, which they've lost 2-1. In a game in which my opinion England should have won when you look at it on paper, having one of their best squads in years and years and years, with quality pretty much all over the pitch. Now of course it's all good saying England should have won on paper, but when it came to the actual game Spain were just by far the better side. Maybe not in the first half so much, it was a bit more even, but when that second half kicked off Spain just switched it on straight away and we're just all over England and England couldn't cope with it. Of course we got back into the game with that amazing Cole Palmer goal but again throughout the second half especially England were just struggling and I was watching the game and these lot could hardly keep the ball and when they did get it Spain were just too good at pressing the ball and won it back straight away. You could just see throughout the game every time Spain lost the ball they were just pressing again with three or four players going for the ball. And now of course this means that everyone in the world excluding English people are laughing at England for bottling the second Euros final in a row which is pretty embarrassing and if I'm not mistaken I don't think any international team has ever lost back to back finals. So yeah essentially for now England are the world's laughing stock and yes if you couldn't tell already I am English so yes I know I'm included in this. However what I will say is this Euros final was definitely not as bad as the Euro 2020 final where England drew 1-1 and then ultimately lost on penalties to Italy, which is definitely the game that hurt the most personally. And after thinking about both the Spain final and the Italy final, the Italy final was definitely the game that hurt the most between the two. Considering England got all the way to penalties just to lose was disappointing. And I also thought England at times were probably the better side in that Italy game. Whereas again, this Spain game, I mean, we were nowhere near the level we should have been. And I think personally, England did kind of bottle it. And as I just said, Spain were ultimately superior in possession and also out of possession and just killed England in the transitions. And there was a period during the game right after Nico Williams scored where for me it just looked like England were going to concede more and more. It felt like as soon as England even managed to get the ball Spain just won it back straight away and got on the counter attack which was ironic considering that everyone was celebrating when Rodri was subbed off but if anything this just made the situation worse for England. And I think Spain had something like 60% possession and England had 30 something so they were all over us. And I just think man for man Spain were also just a lot better. I mean watching Walker and Shaw up against Yamal and Williams was a struggle. Even in the midfield battle as well I thought Rice was poor, Bellingham was okay at times and up front well it was just non-existent. Kane I mean where do I start he's already had quite a poor tournament and in that final he was even worse he was just non-existent considering this guy is the main man in England and arguably the best English player and obviously the top English goal scorer of all time. Foden as well who had another poor tournament seven games no goals no assists was again non-existent and Saka was probably the only positive attacker we had that tournament. And by the time South Kate decided that the likes of Kane needed to come off and Watkins and Palmer came on. It did look lively but just by that point it was already too late and the game was already over by that point. So why is it that the best England team that there's been in years keeps on getting so close but yet so far from international glory? Now I don't want to be the one to start pointing fingers and all of that but a lot of people do believe that the failure of this England side is down to one man and I'm sure you know what I'm on about. Gareth Southgate. Yes, the England manager. Well, not anymore because he literally just left like a day before I recorded this, but we'll get into that later on. But yeah, Gareth Southgate, who has been England manager since 2016, who came into the role after England's embarrassing failure in the Euro 2016 tournament where they got knocked out to Iceland. Iceland. No disrespect at all to Iceland, but it's... Iceland. Anyway, back to my point. Southgate was appointed in 2016 after Sam Allardyce resigned after the Euros in 2016. With Southgate being appointed, a lot of people felt like this was a new era for English football and a chance for England to have a real go in international tournaments, considering the quality of players that were also coming through in the Premier League at the time. With Southgate's first competition being the 2018 World Cup, where I'm not going to go over the whole tournament, but he did have a good tournament and took England all the way to the semi finals, becoming the first England manager to reach a semi final since 1990. And many people were 
were impressed at how far Southgate managed to get in his first big international competition as a manager. And to go forward a bit more, on came the 2020 Euros, which I mentioned earlier, where England managed to get all the way to the final and probably had their, in my opinion, their best international tournament in the Southgate era, where they got all the way to the finals and then ended up losing to winners Italy on penalties. And onto the 2022 World Cup, which was a bit more disappointing, where England were knocked out in the quarterfinals to France, who, to be fair, did go all the way to the final and then lost to Argentina. And then onto the 2024 Euros, which just happened, which we just lost. So on paper, Southgate's record is actually quite impressive, but stats never tell the full story. And for me personally, as an honest England fan, I've always felt like England are predicted to do well and always pushed to do well in tournaments. And we do get far, but for me, it feels like whenever we've come up against a better team or a bigger team, such as France or Spain, for example, we just get taken apart and there's no resilience or no character to fight back. And it kind of feels like the game is already over before it's even started. And I mean, if you look at England's opponents in the last four tournaments, we haven't really played anyone that significant, apart from France in 2022, of course, which we lost. Spain, again, we lost. Italy, we lost. The only sort of apart from that, there just isn't really anyone else in my who have been better than us that we've beat. Even with the 2024 Euros, in my opinion, it kind of just felt like England sort of stumbled their way into the final. And to be honest, I was actually surprised we managed to get so far. I was quite negative about it, and I did believe England weren't going to go so far in that tournament. But to be fair, we did still get to the final. Final. Somehow. I mean, we struggled a lot against the likes of Slovakia and Netherlands, whereas Spain, on the other hand, pretty much dominated all of their opponents throughout the whole tournament and were the better team in all the games they played. And I think the failure of England is a tactical issue, which boils down to Southgate, of course. Because as I've mentioned many a times, this is the best England squad we've had in years. But I've never felt like Southgate managed to get the best out of this squad. And I've always felt like, especially in big games, England always set up way too defensively and never really attack their opponent. Considering the quality we have up top, you know, we've got Saka, Foden, Kane, Palmer, Watkins, the list goes on. And probably the most famous example of this is the 2020 Euros, where England were really aggressive in their press and their attack in the beginning of the match and managed to grab an early goal, just for them to then sit back for the rest of the game and concede in the 67th minute, and then go on to lose the full game. And now I'm not going to go into a full tactical analysis about Southgate. In fact, I'd recommend this video here, which goes into depth about England's tactics versus Spain's tactics and how they differed. But yeah, what do you guys think? And what's your opinion on England? And who would you like to see replacing Southgate now that he has left his role of England manager? There has been a lot of rumours about someone like Pep or maybe Klopp coming into the role, which would just be amazing. Please, please make it happen. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And if you have enjoyed, please be sure to like, subscribe because it always helps the channel. And thanks for watching. This has been Discussing Ball.